This is the RCA Vibra Mark 8 Stereo Automatic Changer, or as I've noticed some people who don't know what it is call it the microwave, due to its similarity in appearance to a microwave oven of similar vintage. However, there is quite a size difference, because this, whoa, this is a microwave oven of similar vintage, well, probably around 1985 or so. Wow, it's also very messy. And this is the RCA Vibra Mark 8 Stereo Automatic Changer on top of it. And you can tell, up close, there is no mistaking this for this. Also, it does not heat food. No, do not put that in there. Model number is MYC969W-V, and that is for the walnut grain model. I don't know what other finishes were available, this is the only specimen I have. Hookups are fairly standard. You have a North American 2-pin AC power cable, uh, old-fashioned non-polarized variety, of course, and that's 120 volts, 60 hertz or cycles per second, 45 watts. And you have RCA line level audio output with these fancy RCA plugs on them. That's it. And uh, don't mind this extra switch here. I added that on myself. Uh, this enables or disables some extra remote control functions, which I'll show you later. Not included on the base model. It's worth noting that the name Vibra is not unique to this series. RCA used the name Vibra for various audio electronics for the consumer market, including uh, record players, 8-track and other tape players, radios, and probably others. There were some variations on this model available. Uh, some of them had a slightly different color scheme, but there were also models that included a tuner and an amplifier with controls right here in the otherwise blank region on this unit. This one does not have an integrated amplifier, so you have to connect it to an external amplifier. Thankfully, it uses the standard RCA line level outputs so that you can connect it to virtually any amplifier. For the purposes of this demonstration, I will just be using these dinky lab tech computer speakers, which is good enough because you won't be able to hear what it actually sounds like in person through this video anyway. I have to say also, although I won't be able to demonstrate it, that this is probably the best sounding 8-track player I've ever used, and really changed my mind as to what an 8-track tape can sound like. It has a full, warm sound, crisp highs, and because it uses an AC synchronous motor, its speed is very accurate and consistent also. It has a very simple user interface, it really only comes with three buttons, one to change the current currently playing cartridge, a track button to change the currently playing program, and a power on and off switch. These two buttons I actually added myself, and those serve other purposes that I have yet to demonstrate, but they are also not part of the base model. And uh, you'll have to forgive me here, I really looked for buttons that would match the styling of the existing unit. Uh, and I think I did pretty well as far as matching the chrome look uh, and the, the amber indicators, but I couldn't find any rectangular switches, sadly. This unit holds up to five 8-track cartridges at a time. That means if you are using 90 minute recordable 8 tracks, which I don't recommend anyone ever use, uh, but you could, <laughs> but the, lo the laws of physics are kind of against you if you choose to do that. Uh, but if you do choose to do that, you can have up to 7.5 hours of continuous music if you load them all in this unit. It has a fancy smoke colored cover, which not only makes it look snazzy, but also serves to dampen the noise coming from the mechanism. And if you're familiar with 8-tracks, you know that there is always noise coming from the mechanism. If everything is oiled and running smoothly, you'll have just a uh, very nice, consistent hissing sound coming from whatever cartridge is being played. And that, of course, is 
you'll probably want to read up on this for more information. Uh, but the, the coil of tape inside the endless loop cartridge has layers which all slide against each other, which gives you that nice hissing sound. Uh, but this really... Most people would assume that this is only for looks. It's not just for looks. It, it actually makes the unit a lot quieter when it's in operation. This entire magazine holding the five cartridges is also removable. And uh, I've never seen another magazine like this, and I don't have another one. Uh, so... I can't really demonstrate swapping them out, and I can't really confirm this, but uh, I imagine that if you were running this in a store or uh, some commercial establishment where you needed continuous audio, um, you would be able to switch these out occasionally as, as in one bulk pack of tapes. Inside, and hopefully I can... there we go. It's really just five 8-track players. Anyone who's familiar with 8-track players will uh, will recognize most of this. Uh, See, so we have we have five heads vertically in the center there. Uh, that's that's five playback heads, and each one of them moves, although they all move at once as a group. Um, we have five uh, pickups right here for the foil splices in the tape that signify a program change at the end of the program. And we have one very tall capstan driven by a single motor. You may wonder how it selects which cartridge to play and how it moves the cartridges in and out of the unit. Well, there are five fingers along the edge here, which I will operate. So you'll see it uh, pull all of the attempt to pull all of the cartridges in one at a time. That's cartridge one, two, three, four, five. A very simple mechanism. There's, a, there's also a plate right here. When a cartridge is loaded, it will hit this plate, and that closes a switch, which tells the unit to stop cycling and stop on that cartridge and play it until the end. Uh, and you know, there's not actually an end to 8-track cartridges, but uh, at the end of program 4 is when it advances to the next cartridge automatically. So enough with the jibba-jabba, let's play some tapes. So I'll load this magazine that I have already loaded with cartridges. There's a window that shows the current cartridge. Right now it is in the load position. And then there's a window that shows the current program number. Currently it is number one. So to start this thing playing, all I have to do is hit the cartridge button to advance to cartridge number one. So it's now playing cartridge number one program number one. To advance to the next program, I just hit the track button. And now we're on program two. If I want to completely skip to the next cartridge, I just press the cartridge button. And there it is. We just caught the tail end of a song but there should be one starting momentarily. Yep, oh, there we go. If you're done listening to music, you press the cartridge button until it's back in the load position. You can pull the cartridge back, or the magazine back out, or you can pull out individual cartridges. It's worth noting also that if you are playing a cartridge I am playing cartridge number one. I'm unable to pull cartridge number one out. However, there's a little bit of resistance, but I can pull out other cartridges. So while a cartridge is playing, you can swap other cartridges to change what's coming up next in your playlist, which I frequently do. If you switch off the power, it will park the mechanism in the load position and then switch off. And it's just that simple. Or at least it was that simple until I started adding features. Before I proceed, I thought I'd try to demonstrate the sound dampening that the smoke colored cover provides. And this is the sound with the cover off. 
and listen to the difference when I put it on. Much quieter. Now you may say, this unit is so amazing, how could it possibly need any improvements? Well, uh... <laughs> I love this music, sorry. Uh, let me show you the first improvement I made. There, that was it. Not too obvious, right? And the reason why is because that's exactly how it should function. But if you look at a video of any other changer similar to this one, when they get to the end of, or when they get to program four and press the button one more time, the cartridge advances to the next cartridge, like this, without even pressing the cartridge button. And that is the default behavior of this unit. And my problem with that is that you don't need the player to advance to the next cartridge when you're switching programs by pressing the track button because there is a separate cartridge button right there. For example, if you are on program 4 on cartridge 2 and you want to switch to program 1, you can't do it because with the base unit, if you press the track button to switch to program 1, it also advances to cartridge 3, and then you have to advance manually to cartridge 4, and then 5, and then load position, and then 1, and back to 2, just because you wanted to get from program 4 to 1. That was really annoying, so I fixed it. And it was actually a very simple fix. All I had to do was replace the switch behind this track button here with a different kind of switch. Instead of a single pole, single throw, it needed to be double pole, double throw, and made a slight wiring modification as well. And there you go, that's it. Uh, so it, I am completely clueless as to why they didn't make that same modification at the factory. However, when the player is playing cartridges automatically, without you manually selecting which program you want, you do want it to advance from the last program of a cartridge to the first program of the next cartridge. So let's see what that looks like. At the end of program four on cartridge three, this is what happens. And it's great that it'll play your full stack of cartridges with no interruptions automatically, but what happens when it gets to the end? Well, this is what happens. This is the end of program four on cartridge five. And that's it. It just stops and goes back to the load position, which is fine if all you wanted to do was listen to the, those five cartridges that are in the magazine. But what if you want continuous music? I use this in my office, and I frequently want continuous music. So that brings me to the first new feature I added, a repeat button. So if you press this repeat button, it will never park at the load position. So right now it's skipped to cartridge one. And through the magic of editing, I'll show you, I'll repeat that same scenario, but I won't make you wait for it. Here we are back at the end of program four on cartridge five again, this time with repeat on. Amazing, it should have done that all along. If I want to play just one album continuously, well then I just load one cartridge. And, I've, and if I wanted to load a two cartridge album and play that continuously, well I can do that too. It doesn't matter which slots I put these cartridges in, as long as they're in the correct order that I want to hear them. Part one and part two. And here's the end of program four on cartridge three.
And since it skips any cartridges that are not currently installed, it goes directly to cartridge two. Now here's the next feature I added. Ordinarily, if you wanted to stop the currently playing music and come back to it later, you would just turn the power off and the mechanism would park in the load position and the machine will switch off. Then when you turn the power back on, it advances to the next cartridge that's installed and begins playing that. The problem with that is you may not have been on that cartridge, so you effectively lose your place. So here we are still on program 3, as we were before powering off, but instead of cartridge 3, we are on cartridge 2. So you have to manually advance back to the cartridge you were on, assuming that you remember which cartridge you were on. And at that point, play is resumed. Since I use this in my office, and I have to, uh, have to leave and run errands and come back frequently, that's really inconvenient for me. So. I added the obvious, to me, feature that this thing was lacking, a pause button. <laughs> now the astute among you will fully realize that the mechanism did not remove the head from the cartridge and park it, rather it just disconnected the power from the capstan motor. That was somewhat deliberate on my part. I had originally considered adding a mute circuit so you don't hear the, uh, the tape winding down, or actually modifying the mechanism so that it would remove the cartridge from the head or the head from the cartridge, but then I kind of decided that I really like that sound. It, it sounds so distinctly analog, and uh, it, it's, it's difficult to replicate with modern equipment, and it has a certain charm to it, so I left it exactly as it was. So it simply disconnects power from the motor. And you turn pause off, and... You're a nice, gradual spin-up with a massive flywheel and the uh, inertia imposed on it. It's a, it's a charming effect, I think. <laughs> Little unprofessional, maybe, but I like it. Now on to the next flaw in the original design that I fixed. Kind of using air quotes here because uh, it's arguable whether this was actually a flaw since I think it was inherent to every single 8-track player I have ever seen. Uh, if you know how 8-track tapes work, and even if you don't, <laughs> here you go. There's a, it's a continuous loop of tape uh, that has no beginning or end. Wow, focus is really a problem here. Sorry about that. Uh, at the end, or beginning, of the loop of tape, there is a foil splice, which is electrically conductive. You can see it there, as I'm advancing it past the pinch roller. And when this tape goes by, uh, when the machine pulls this piece, this uh, splice, past the heads, it contacts a sensor, which is really just a set of electrical contacts that completes an electrical circuit that advances the machine to playing the next program. And mechanically what it does is it just moves the heads physically across the tape so that they're aligned with the next set of tracks or next program on the tape. And um, I'm not going to explain it any more than that, so uh, look it up. It's really interesting if you care to know more. But inside the player, as I pointed out before, uh, there are five playback heads, one for each cartridge, one, two, three, four, five. There are also five sets of electrical contacts, one, two, three, four, five. And those contacts are what the foil splice in the tape contacts <laughs> when it comes by, which signals the machine to advance the program. The fix I made is best described as trigger debouncing, and I have it disabled right now, and I can show you later how I disabled that. Um, but the, so the thing is, when the foil splice on the tape goes past one of these sets of contacts, 
It completes an electrical circuit that activates a solenoid that pulls a mechanical linkage that um, just shifts all of these heads down one notch so that they are aligned with the next program or next set of tracks on the tape. And, um, and, a, and a switch or a set of switches advances this indicator right here to show uh, one, two, three, or four, or move to the next cartridge also accordingly. But the problem is that sometimes the foil splice gets dirty or the pads in the 8-track cartridge uh, get weak and they don't press the foil splice against the contacts firmly and you get a poor or intermittent connection. And what happens is basically this. You get a, you get a stutter, which means you either incompletely advance to the next program uh, which is the same as not advancing at all, or even worse, you advance more than once. Right there, it didn't advance at all. You can hear it stutter, but it didn't do anything. And this is, by the way, what happens when you advance past program four and back to one. Uh, it searches through the available cartridges to try to play the next one. Of course, there aren't any installed, so it just keeps going until it gets back to the load position. Uh, Anyway, so this is with the feature disabled. See, uh, as I wobble the screwdriver back and forth there, operation's kind of erratic. And again, as far as I know, this is a problem on all 8-track players. It's inherent to the format. But now, I'm going to enable my fix. Okay, it's enabled. Yes, magic, I know, I'll show you later. This is with my fix enabled. We get a nice clean activation. See, no matter how intermittent the connection was, the, uh, the pulse is stretched to 0.4 seconds. So, and that's done by means of a digital timer that I've installed. So if there is a, a dirty splice, or a splice that's not making a good connection to the contacts here, and you would normally get that stuttered pulse, instead the pulse is stretched to a, a 0.4 second duration single pulse, and it fills in the gaps, so you don't have that problem. Ta-da! Like I said, this problem is inherent on all 8-track players. There may be some professional series players that I'm not aware of that have the same kind of fix, but um, yeah, I, I've never heard of one. So as far as I know, this is something that wasn't built into any equipment at the time. Lastly, and this is definitely the best of the new features I added, like most consumer electronics of the era, you had to get up and walk across the room if you wanted to change the music you were listening to or turn it off. But no more, because I've added remote control for most of the unit's features with a semi-modern remote control. Uh, this is a Boston Acoustics A7RC, also known as a Philips Pronto Neo TSU501. And it is of uh, probably about 2003 vintage. It's programmed using a computer. And um, there's a control system in the background that it's utilizing that I will explain a little later. But I have control of most functions here. I can hit the play button, and it should move into the position to play the first cartridge. And we're on program one. I can advance the program. It's program two. Program three. Program 4, and advance it one more time and we get the next cartridge. I can turn repeat on, which we demonstrated earlier. I can turn repeat off. I can pause. <laughs> with that lovely sound that we adore. Unpause. And I can stop it, which 
parks it in the load position. Ta-da! And the mysterious control system alluded to earlier is none other than the infamous X10, one of the first, if not the first, commercial home automation standard developed in the 1970s, which makes it appropriate vintage for this player. And with X10 powering this player, you can use to control it not only the remote control like the one I showed you, but a variety of other wired and wireless controllers, such as the X10 Powerhouse Mini Timer, so that you can set your 8-track player to wake you up with music in the morning or help you go to sleep at night with a timed sleep timer. The uh, X10 Palm Pad, which is really just another remote, as is this key fob, so you can walk into the house and immediately switch on your 8-track player. No, uh... No waiting around to do that. Uh, or, why wouldn't you just use the motion detector and have the A-Track player start playing music as soon as you enter the room? Or you might like a nice wired bedside controller. All of these and more! And of course you can use the new X10 Wi-Fi hub so that you can control the A-Track player with your smartphone. And we won't get into that. And a whole new world of automation possibilities opens up once you add a computer interface and software control. I wrote this quick little test program just to show off what it can do and make sure all the functions are working. So just as an example, I'll hit number one here for play. And over here we're playing cartridge one. We'll do number three for program advance. Number three again. Number three again. Uh, number four, slouch is kind of my term for my uh, custom pause function. <laughs> Uh, number five, D slouch. We'll resume. We can turn repeat all on and off. Six for on, seven for off. And we'll hit number two for stop slash load. Mechanism is now parked in the load position. And uh, you also see here, this is how I enabled and disabled the trigger debouncing. Here's just a very brief look at the inside through the open back panel. I could spend hours here showing you how everything works, how every little function is accommodated, but I'm not going to. Uh, suffice to say, it's all electromechanical control. Here's the AC synchronous motor that drives the capstan. There's a separate motor on the underside for driving the actual transport mechanism that switches cartridges. Uh, this is just a power transformer. And if anyone can read these numbers and maybe decipher a date code, that would be awesome to know when this was made. I haven't been able to figure that out. There's also something printed here. Uh, zero, 010, zero, I don't know if that's a six or what that's supposed to be. Um, but none of these look like a date code to me. There's also Japan 303 right here. Um, so, made in Japan, that's, that's interesting. Uh, right up here is where I put that new switch in for, uh, focus. Hey, focus. There we go. Uh, that's where I put the new switch in for the track button. And there was, uh, there was some drilling and screwing required to mount that but not too shabby uh, over here is the digital timer circuit there's an FRM01 timer board in there uh, and a and this is a 3d printed case to go with that and this is how I achieve the automation and remote control this is two dual load micro appliance modules uh, they are from an unknown Chinese company, no brand name, 
uh, but the model number is 2268HE. They were made for the European market. I modified them to work on 120 volts and also swapped out the relays with double pull, double throw relays and uh, see so soldered individual leads to where they need to go to achieve the various features I'm adding. And uh, that's, that's pretty much all I'm going to show you. If there's enough demand, maybe someday I'll, uh, I'll do a video showing uh, more of the innards, but that's probably not likely to happen. You're still here? Congratulations, you're a freak. Thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't. Probably shouldn't bother subscribing because I hardly ever do this kind of thing. Till next time, stay on track. Don't jump the track. Something. <laughs>